Constituency Report is produced as a public service by members of the BC Legislature through the facilities of Shaw TV. Welcome to Constituency Report. I'm your host, McLean Kay. Joining me in the set today is the MLA for Richmond Steveston and the Parliamentary Secretary for Clean Technology to the Minister of Energy and Mines, John Yap. John, welcome. Great to be here, McLean. Uh, first of all, the Parliamentary Secretary role is a new one for you. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. What will this role entail? Well, uh, this will allow me to continue uh, focusing on the clean tech sector. Uh, which uh, is related to climate action, which is the portfolio that I uh, had previously. Uh, clean technology is a sector which is really growing in British Columbia. Uh, it's not widely known uh, uh, that uh, this is, uh, uh, here in British Columbia, this is a really important uh, uh, job generator and investment uh, generator. Uh, British Columbia's clean tech sector is one of the largest in the world, uh, following California and Germany. Uh, we're right up there. Uh, in terms of uh, number of people in the sector. So I'm delighted to have this opportunity to uh, champion and focus on and work with uh, the clean tech sector uh, in encouraging continued investment and job creation. Would it be fair to say that BC has been making great strides in this area? Absolutely. We have some really leading edge companies in clean tech, you know, whether it's companies like Nextera that are involved in uh, leading edge uh, gasification technology, turning biomass into clean burning gas, uh, or if it's uh, uh, hydrogen fuel cells, you know, we've for many years been uh, a world leader in hydrogen fuel cell technology. Uh, you mentioned hydrogen fuel cells. Uh, you had the chance to try out a hydrogen powered car. Uh, I have to ask, how, how was that? Uh, that was great. That was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, I had the opportunity to test drive uh, a uh, Toyota uh, Highlander SUV that was uh, uh, outfitted with a hydrogen fuel cell uh, engine and uh, had the use of it for a day. It was uh, tremendous. Uh, it uh, feels and drives like a regular car but is uh, clean, burning and zero emissions. Uh, lots of power. It's a great future technology that will be arriving soon. On the environment and the education front, you recently paid a visit to Brighouse Elementary School. Um, this was built to lead gold standards? Absolutely. Uh, we, we had the chance to be at the grand opening of uh, Brighouse Elementary, uh, new, new elementary school building, and this is a leads gold standard, meaning that it's environmentally uh, friendly and uh, built to the higher standards in terms of uh, energy efficiency and uh, will actually provide great learning experience for the students as well. You've had the chance to make some other school visits recently as well? Yes, we try to visit uh, all of the schools uh, in my uh, district at least uh, uh, once each year. Our new Premier, Christy Clark, has uh, a family's first agenda. Uh, first, can you talk uh, what that will mean to your riding? Well, it's, it's uh, very important. I mean, families are at the heart of our society and our communities and neighborhoods. Uh, and we need to focus uh, and put them at the center of uh, government decision making. Uh, our Premier has uh, made this a priority. Uh, and it really makes sense because whether it's uh, looking at making our economy competitive, job creation through the private sector, all those supports families throughout all our communities. We should also mention uh, we have a new uh, leader of the NDP. Uh, what are your thoughts on Adrian Dix? Well, um, first of all, congratulations to Mr. Dix. He's a very hardworking uh, MLA and uh, uh, it's interesting that uh, the NDP have chosen to go with Mr. Dix uh, because this will provide a very strong contrast, a clear choice you know, for British Columbians at the next election, whenever that comes, you know, between a really uh, left-wing agenda of higher taxes uh, and, um, uh, and more spending uh, versus uh, our approach, uh, which has been to keep our competitive tax uh, structure and uh, support families through encouraging uh, investment and uh, attracting uh, job creation. One of the ways uh, the government's been supporting families is through community gaming grants. There was recently a $15 million boost uh, for some organizations in your riding. You've got some nice thank yous for those, I believe. Yes, um, very pleased that uh, 
uh, under Premier uh, Christy Clark's leadership, uh, we've uh, found a way to restore the gaming grants to historic levels. Uh, and uh, this means in very practical terms that community groups uh, in my community are able to get the financial support to do the good work that they do you know, in our community. Uh, like all communities in BC, Richmond has some really fantastic groups doing some really great work. Are there any in particular that come to mind? Yes, uh, I had the opportunity recently to uh, visit with the uh, folks who uh, patrol our uh, and uh, are on standby to provide uh, uh, support, uh, marine rescue uh, in Steveton Harbor and the riverfront, uh, the Marine Rescue Society, and they received uh, uh, a little boost in. Uh, gaming grant funding, so I was very pleased to be able to be there to uh, present the check to them uh, and uh, you know see their marine rescue boat. We also have a photo from the Richmond Fruit Tree Sharing Project. Yes, uh, another great uh, community group. Uh, this encourages uh, folks who uh, have an interest uh, in uh, um, growing fruits and vegetables to uh, to do so in a community uh, garden. Uh, and to uh, you know produce uh, fruits and vegetables for consumption and uh, uh, it's a it's, it's a great way to encourage grassroots support for uh, uh, for for growing your own food you also recently helped the success organization celebrate its annual gala uh, this group does some amazing work for seniors and families doesn't it very much so success uh, is a great success uh, they are a leading uh, immigrant services uh, social service uh, agency and they've uh, diversified into providing service to seniors. Uh, they run a number of seniors residences and nursing homes uh, and provide support to uh, new Canadians uh, from all over the world uh, whether it's in settlement uh, but also uh, in uh, entrepreneurship and uh, uh, you know helping people uh, become uh, contributing members of uh, Canadian society. Uh, it's a great group and uh, I was able and very happy to attend their uh, one of their annual fundraisers. Another great group is the Richmond Hospice Association. Uh, they just recently celebrated their 25th anniversary. How important are they to the community? Well, uh, they're really the unsung heroes of, uh, uh, of our healthcare system and uh, the hospice movement, uh, hospice association in Richmond have been working for 25 years uh, caring for people uh, you know at, at the end of life uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's work like that that they do that makes a difference to the lives of people, uh, families in our communities uh, as they deal with uh, end of life. I also want to chat a bit about a very exciting recent event in Richmond, the opening of the newly expanded uh, emergency room at Richmond Hospital. How badly was this needed? Well, uh, it was uh, a great day attending the grand opening. Uh, this uh, expanded. Uh, they added 2,000 square feet uh, and renovated uh, emergency department uh, for Richmond. Uh, will serve not just Richmond, but the entire region. Uh, and uh, it's, it's state of the art. They have a great uh, crew, they great staff that provide you know very great uh, emergency care. Uh, and now they have the tools to really provide top-notch service to the community and region. It, as you mentioned, it's not just expanded, but they also have access to some absolutely state-of-the-art technology. Is that right? Yes, uh, they demonstrated for us at the grand opening uh, what they call the Voicera system, which is uh, uh, an amazing communication tool. Uh, the uh, doctors and nurses and other staff there are able to communicate uh, almost hands-free at uh, the touch of a button. Uh, and that really enhances the quality of care that can be provided at the emergency department. Tell us a little bit about uh, Richmond Lions Manor. Uh, this is a capital project through Vancouver Coastal Health, is that right? Yes, Richmond Lions Manor is a 90-bed uh, um, uh, community care uh, nursing home in uh, Steveton, in my community. And um, it, it's uh, uh, a, a building that has uh, uh, reached you know pretty much the end of its uh, uh, useful uh, life. Uh, the staff do a tremendous job in coping and providing great care to the residents, to the patients. Um, uh, however, this now is uh, a priority project for uh, Vancouver Coastal uh, to uh, find a replacement for Richmond Lions Manor so that the uh, 90 or so residents can uh, live in a uh, and be cared for uh, in a you know, better 
facility. So uh, I'm very happy to work with uh, Vancouver Coastal uh, and members of the Steveton community to uh, work towards uh, a replacement for Richmond Lions Manor. We also recently learned that Richmond will get to host the 2012 World, sorry, the Sport Events Congress. Uh, how significant is this for Richmond? This is really significant. For the first time in its history, uh, the um, uh, Canadian Sports Tourism Association, uh, which is an association of all the uh, major uh, sports associations around the country, uh, will hold their congress, their annual congress, uh, in Western Canada. It's the first time they're holding it in Western Canada, and Richmond uh, beat out uh, two other um, um, host city applicants, uh, and 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 will bring for the first time ever uh, this congress to. Uh, to the west coast. Uh, Richmond uh, will be a great host, I'm very confident, uh, and think about it, this, w this will be a convention that will have uh, hundreds of uh, coaches and general managers uh, from sports organizations uh, from around the country and it will be a great opportunity to showcase Richmond and British Columbia. The Vancouver Airport fuel delivery project is a major issue. Can you tell us what this will entail and your thoughts on it? Sure. Uh, the Vancouver Airport is, uh, of course, a major asset for the city of Richmond and the province and, and our country. Uh, Vancouver Airport uh, is looking at, uh, through a, a group of airlines, uh, enhancing their jet fuel delivery uh, system. Uh, they're now proposing, as, as their preferred option, uh, to build a pipeline uh, from the uh, south arm of the Fraser River, a 15 kilometers length pipeline through uh, the city of Richmond to the airport. Uh, they also are, uh, are proposing that there be a uh, fuel tank system that may be built on the south arm uh, and the system will have uh, uh, large tankers uh, delivering uh, fuel to be offloaded at the tanks uh, and then transported by the pipeline to the airport. Um, there's a couple of concerns that uh, people in the community have expressed uh, and one is the uh, concern about uh, large tankers carrying, um, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of liters of uh, jet fuel um, along the Fraser River, which is a well-traveled river uh, and a sensitive ecosystem, a major salmon-run river. Uh, so there's concerns about, you know, how how would we cope with this? And secondly, the concern with regard to uh, the pipeline, which will travel through a, a, a very populated part of, uh, of Richmond. So this project is now uh, at the assessment stage, uh, environmental assessment stage, uh, and uh, you know I've heard very clearly from uh, the people of Richmond, my constituents, uh, they have, that they have great concerns about uh, this option. We do have to take a short break, but I do want to ask more about the fuel delivery project when we return. Stay tuned and we'll be back with Richmond Steveston MLA John Yap. Welcome back to Constituency Report with John Yap. John, before the break, we were talking about the Vancouver Airport fuel delivery project. Uh, is there a way for Richmond residents to have a say in the matter? Absolutely. Uh, Richmond residents uh, can continue to provide their comments, their feedback. Uh, the comment period has been extended uh, by the Environmental Assessment Office, so that gives uh, folks the opportunity to uh, provide their comments, uh, and their issues, their concerns with respect to this uh, project. Uh, and uh, as, as a, uh, a further comment, uh, you know, the, the airport is uh, an important asset for Richmond and we need to find a way for the airport to have uh, fuel delivery uh, put in place that is uh, effective for the airport but also uh, works for the community. 
Another important asset is the Steveston Harbor. Um, what's going on with the redevelopment there? Where, where's that at? Well, uh, there's a long-term vision to revitalize uh, the uh, Richmond Steveston uh, Harbor front, and uh, uh, it's uh, great to work with a group of community leaders who are who have a long-term vision for uh, vital revitalizing the the riverfront. Uh, you know, to make it uh, a very special even more special place uh, than it is. Uh, there's a vision to have a, uh, a park system uh, as part of uh, the development uh, and uh, looking forward to working with my colleagues uh, for uh, Steveston to be a part of the experience to Fraser park system which uh, uh, we've talked about in the past and which our government is uh, supportive of. Speaking of your colleagues, you recently met with your fellow MLAs, Rob Howard and Linda Reed, and the RCMP on some community outreach issues. Can you elaborate a little on, on that? Sure. Uh, this is uh, part of our ongoing uh, communication uh, contact with the uh, leadership of the Richmond Detachment of the RCMP. Uh, and really, it's to um, ensure that you know we're aware of uh, uh, what the uh, some of the issues are, the challenges uh, for the uh, for the police uh, in Richmond. Uh, we have a, a, a great uh, community. Uh, we have uh, a great sense of uh, public safety and uh, the RCMP do a good job in Richmond and uh, it's important that we, you know, uh, continue to support um, uh, our uh, um, police uh, in, in Richmond. Uh, they do a good job and uh, we have the opportunity through the, this dialogue to uh, find out a bit more about, uh, you know, some of the issues. Uh, and uh, you know, provide what uh, support that we can. You attended a signing ceremony with representatives from Richmond's sister city in China, which I will let you attempt to pronounce. Yes, uh, the uh, sister city, Xiamen, uh, is uh, a, a coastal city, uh, much like Richmond, uh, on the west coast of, of southeast west coast of uh, uh, southeast coast of China, and. Um, uh, is uh, making the transition from a friendship city to a full-fledged sister city with Richmond. And I had the uh, honor of being invited to the signing ceremony between uh, the mayor of Richmond, uh, Malcolm Brody, and the uh, vice mayor of um, uh, Xiaomen, uh, Vice Mayor Zhang. Uh, and there was a great ceremony at uh, Richmond City Hall, followed by uh, a uh, cele celebration uh, dinner uh, in honor of the signing. Uh, with this signing of a memorandum of understanding, the city of Richmond will work towards uh, a full-fledged sister city relationship with Xiaomen uh, within the next year, uh, and uh, that would make Xiaomen the third sister city for Richmond, uh, the first being uh, Wakayama in Japan and the second being Perfons in Quebec. Your Richmond colleagues also joined you on a tour of a local success story in Richmond called McKesson. Uh, what did they do? Well, you know, McKesson are one of those uh, under-the-radar um, businesses that uh, are, are so significant, and yet we don't really hear much about uh, unless you happen to be, you know, in their line of work. Uh, McKesson uh, is uh, one of the largest distributors of pharmaceutical products, and they also have a very large presence in uh, medical imaging, you know, whether it's MRIs or scans or x-rays and the software that goes with it. Their imaging um, center, their, their imaging business is headquartered in Richmond and we had the opportunity to tour their facility recently uh, and learn about, uh, you know, the, the great work that uh, they do and the uh, employment that they provide. Uh, they have uh, uh, over 700 employees uh, based in Richmond making them one of the larger employers in the city of Richmond. So it was great to, to meet uh, uh, the team there and to uh, get to know a major employer in our community. We have a fun photo to look at here. You're in the barber's chair for the Wigs for Kids charity event. Can you tell us a bit about the Wigs sure. for Kids? Uh, this is uh, an annual fundraiser that started a few years ago, uh, a grassroots uh, effort that uh, a few uh, very uh, interested community members uh, decided they wanted to raise funds to help kids who are uh, suffering through uh, the, the uh, ravages of uh, cancer treatment, losing their hair, and wanting to provide them 
uh, with the uh, uh, with wigs, you know, so that they would, you know, have uh, at least that opportunity to feel a bit better. Uh, so this started about uh, four years ago, and has grown into a tremendous community uh, fundraiser, and they did really well. So I was glad to be able to uh, uh, participate and uh, lend my support to Wigs for Kids. Uh, the uh, the group led by Bev Friesen, who's a, uh, a very enthusiastic uh, member of the Steveton community. Uh, do this every year, and you know it's 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 such a, uh, a a great thing they do to help kids in a time of need. You also had the chance to hand out some medals uh, to teams at the Richmond Cup soccer tournament. How did you enjoy that? One of the joys of being uh, MLA is the opportunity to uh, meet with uh, young people who are uh, striving, and uh, uh, you know uh, the soccer tournament uh, over a weekend recently was a great opportunity to to be there to. Uh, support our uh, very young athletes who are, uh, you know, learning about teamwork and uh, and competition uh, and, uh, and the chance to uh, put a medal around their uh, necks uh, and see their faces light up. That was uh, uh, great fun. Uh, the Richmond soccer program, uh, led by volunteers, uh, is very vibrant in uh, in Richmond, and we're very pleased that uh, the province is able to support through gaming grants. Uh, 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 soccer Association in Richmond. You'll be hosting an open house at the end of May, which coincidentally will be the sixth anniversary of you being an MLA. When and where will this be happening? This will be at our constituency office uh, at 4011 uh, Bayview Street in Richmond in Steveton. Uh, and uh, it'll be uh, just a great opportunity to meet with constituents uh, and other friends. Uh, and uh, it's uh, one of the open houses we do this time of year to mark the uh, uh, anniversary of uh, uh, my uh, honor of being uh, elected by uh, the constituents of Richmond Steveton to be their representative at the legislature. And at the open house, uh, your constituents can ask you pretty much anything they like? Well, uh, it's an open house, uh, very informal. Uh, folks, you know, come and visit, uh, have some refreshments, and. Uh, uh, we, we make a short speech, but really are open to uh, uh, saying hello and engaging and talking to constituents. One of the issues they might bring up, for, for example, is that we recently announced the minimum wage is going up. Um, it's going to be increased incrementally. Uh, why is that being done? Well, uh, it has been a number of years since we adjusted our minimum wage, uh, and uh, it's important that we uh, review this from time to time. Uh, to ensure that our uh, minimum wage is uh, comparable to others uh, ar around the country. Uh, so I'm very pleased that, uh, you know, under Premier Clark's leadership, uh, we are moving forward with uh, an increase uh, staged over the next year uh, to allow employers to adjust to this. Uh, and it's really to ensure that uh, uh, those who are at minimum wage uh, are able to uh, receive a little bit more in, in their income. And I'd like to ask about that that increase. Uh, what does that boost do for you know the workers' pockets and the families they support? How significant of an increase is this? Well, it, it is very significant, uh, you know, in terms of uh, dollar and percentage. Uh, and what it does, it uh, supports you know our focus on families first. Uh, and uh, you know the the vast majority of of British Columbians uh, who have uh, jobs. Uh, are doing better than minimum wage, but we need to also ensure that our minimum wage uh, is comparable. Uh, and with this increase uh, staged over the next year, uh, it'll do just that. Another issue they might want to ask about is the HST referendum. Uh, we've learned some new details on how it'll be distributed, a mail-in ballot. Um, can you talk? What will you be telling your constituents if they ask about that? Well, um, the HST uh, referendum. Uh, is is probably one of the most significant opportunities for British Columbians to have a say uh, in public policy that will have a, a very major impact on their economy. Uh, it's important that uh, we have a, 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 a dispassionate debate about the pros and cons of HST. Uh, I happen to believe that uh, it's uh, uh, the right decision to uh, to stay with HST. Uh, to not go away from it, to go back to the uh, inefficient uh, PST system plus GST that we had in the past. I understand people were 
uh, upset at the way HST was introduced, but I believe you know that is in the past, and we should focus on the future and what's best for our province. And I believe with uh, the, um, uh, the the information that will be provided to British Columbians, with the support of many people who are in favor uh, of staying with HST, uh, that uh, we'll have the opportunity to make history uh, and confirm uh, a tax uh, policy change in in June when we have the referendum. As people are striving to learn more about the tax, what are you telling them about the benefits? Well, uh, first of all, it's about uh, a, a more competitive economy. It's about uh, allowing our businesses to be more competitive. If they're more competitive, they are able to uh, invest more. More investment means more jobs, which means uh, strengthen communities. Um, this is the way that uh, modern economies in the Western world uh, have gone to. Um, you know, virtually all of the industrialized economies uh, have a value-added tax uh, or HST, and that's uh, you know the most effective way uh, to tax at consumption, uh, and in a way that is a value-added tax, so that business can be competitive. Uh, it's it's a, a tax that uh, I believe is uh, the right structure for 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 our economy, uh, and you know I I. Uh, I know that there are more and more people who are starting to realize that uh, with the move to HST uh, that, you know, generally speaking, uh, people have adjusted to it. Uh, and the feeling I get is that support for HST, for keeping it, uh, has been growing and uh, I hope continues to grow and that we, we will be uh, able to uh, confirm in June that uh, HST will, uh, will continue with the passage of uh, a successful referendum. John, unfortunately, that's it. That's all the time we have today. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining me in the studio. If you'd like more information about anything we spoke about today, please visit John's website at johnyapmla.bc.ca. That does it for Constituency Report. I'm McLean Kay. Thanks for watching.